Hi learners, welcome to my YouTube channel. So we'll do the new topic that is the direct and indirect variations. In that let us see the part one. So actually what do you mean by variation? So actually this one, this is the variation is a fundamental principle in nature. We come across many situations in our daily life where we observe how a change in one quantity results in a change in the other quantity. So now I'll give you the example like if you say that as the number of books purchased increases, the total cost also will increase. If you are going to, if you have bought the two books for that is for 50 rupees, so what will be the cost of four books? So this one, if this is two books are costing 50, the, if this number of books increase, so that the total cost also is going to increase. So this will be the direct variation. So now, what do you mean by direct variation? That is the increase in one quantity resulting in a corresponding increase in the second quantity in such a way that the ratio will remain constant is called a direct variation. So now we'll see the example so you'll get a better idea. So now your innings here 10.1 will say which of the following will vary directly. Now look at here, these are the A, B, C, D is given from this one, which of them vary directly. Now I have put this one with a white one, this varies directly. So I'll show you how, because the number of pens and their cost, because if the number of pens are increasing, the cost also increases. So this is a, it varies directly. The number of students and fees collected in the school. If there are more number of students, the fees also, this is going to be more. Collection will be more. So this also is a, will vary directly. The time taken for a fixed journey and the speed of a car. The time is, the, this one, the time taken for a, the journey is fixed and the speed of a car. So this is not a, direct purpose on variation. So now wages and hours of work of a worker. So the wages and the number of hours. If the this will be the number of hours increases the wages also will increase. So this is a this varies directly. So we can say A, B and D. Now check if x and y are varying directly. So we have this one. This is x and y. So we have the formula that is x. We can say this one. We can consider this x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. And this will be y1, y2, y3, y4, and y5. So this x by y that is going to be this 5 by 5, 15. So that is going to be 1 by 3. So now if we take this also, is going to be 1 by 3. 8 by 24 also is 1 by 3. But if we take this part, x by this 15 by 60, so that is going to be 1 by 4. 15 ones are 15 fours are. If we take 18 and 72, 18 ones are 18 fours are. That is 1 by 4. If we take a 20 and this will be, this will be 1 by 5. So what we can see, these are all different. So we can say, so X and Y is not constant because it should be constant. So we can say and X and Y are not directly proportional. Now look for this one. If we take here 100 by 60, this and this goes two threes are two fives, that is five by three. 200 by 30, that is going to be, this and this goes, that will be 20 by 3. 300 by 20, so this and this goes, this will be 15 by 1. And this and this is going to be 400 by 15. So these all are different. So we can say x by y is not constant, hence x and y are not directly proportional. Now here, we'll see here 6 by 4. So that will be two twos are two threes are that will be three by two ten by eight two fours are two fives are that will be five by four fourteen by twelve so two six are two sevens are that will be seven by six eighteen by sixteen so two eights are two nines are that will be nine by eight 
then 22 by 20 so it will be 2 tens and 2 11 so that will be 11 by 2 so we can see this all are different so x by y is not constant hence x and y are not directly proportional in each of the following x and y vary directly with each other for each find a constant of variation so the constant of variation means it will be x by y is the constant of variation so now you can see here y is equal to 6x this is the this is the given equation so now what you can see here, this is x is on the right, this is the left hand side and this is the right hand side. So x is on the right hand side. So if we take here, because we know x by y is the constant of variation. So this x, if we take y on this side, so this will be divided by y. So see here, the x, was, x is already there on the right hand side. This is going to get divided. So this will come here. So what we have here is already 1, so this is going to be 6, so that will be 1 by 6. So we can say, so constant of variation is, what is that? 1 by 6. So this will go here, so this will go in the denominator. This will come here, this will go in the denominator, so this is 1, so that will be x by y is equal to 1 by 6. Now see here, x is already on the left hand side, so this is already here. And this y will come here, that will go in the denominator. Again, 4 is already here, that is in the numerator. This will go here, that will go in the denominator. So that will be constant of variation is 4 by 5. X is already here. Y will go in the denominator. Here there is nothing means there is 1. This will go. This is in the numerator. When it changes the place, that will go to the denominator. So that's going to be 1 by 3. Now look at here. This is first, what will you do? Y is equal to minus 3x. So now here we can see x is here. So if you bring here, this is going to be y. So now this will go in the denominator. So minus 3. So 1 by minus 3. So it can be also written as minus 1 by 3. So why this is so? Because minus divided by plus also is minus. And plus divided by minus also is minus. So we will write here minus 1 by 3. So both, the, both is going to be the same. Now we have this already on the right hand side. If we take here, this will go in the denominator. So now this will go in the denominator and here is one. So this is going to be one by two. So constant of variation is one by two. Find the values of the unknowns if X and Y vary directly. So these, this table is given. So now since y, how, what will you do? Because we said very directly means x and y, very directly means we have the formula that is, see here, this will be x, x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. And this is going to be because this is all y values. So we can consider y1, y2, y3, y4, and y5. So now we will start with x1 by y1. This will be, this is x1 and this is y1 is equal to x2 by y2. So what do we get here? x1 by y1 means 2 by 10. So that will be 10 by 50. So this will be 1 by 5. So now we want the, we want the unknown means we want the value of this p and this q. So now again, what will we do here? x1 by y1 is equal to here. We finish with x2 by, this will be x3 by y3. So x1 by y1 is equal to x3 by y3. So x1 by y1 is 2 by 10. And x3 by y3 means x3 is p and y3 is 125. So now if you cross multiply this one, so what will happen here? 2 into 125 is equal to 10 into p. So now 2 into 125 will be in the numerator. This will go in the denominator is equal to p. So you will simplify this one. To, this will be, uh, sorry, 2 ones are, 2 fives are. 5 ones are 525 are so the value of p is 25 or we can also do one thing you can do it what do you feel easy so now see here this 10 will keep here this will go here 125 and 10 will be already over here and because already it's here so we will not change the place and this p p is already on the right hand side so you can also do like this i'll show you the other way 2 by 10 is already there this 125 goes here that will be 125 here and here the p is already over here so two ones are two fives are five ones are five twenty fives are but this why did i show here because this cross multiplier becomes easier 
this is easy to remember so even if you do this way this is right but see that while doing this be careful now your x1 by y1 will be because we want the value of this q so this is x5 and this will be y5 so x5 by y5 so this will be what is x5 that is 21 and this is q so what is x1 by y1 that will be 2 by 10 is this one so we will cross multiply this also you can do the same the second one what i showed you but then we will do with the cross multiply 2 into 2 is equal 2 into q is equal to 10 into 21 so q is will be this is already here and this will go in the denominator so two ones are two fives are so this into this is going to be 105 so value of q is 105 now again here also we can consider this x1 y1 sorry x2 x3 x4 and x5 and this will be y1 y2 y3 y4 and y5 so since here x and y vary uh, directly so we have x1 by y1 is equal to x2 by y2 so this is x1 by y1 that was 1 by 8 x2 by y2 is p1 by 28 so this will cross multiply so 1 into 28 is equal to p1 into 8 or 8 into p1 both is the same so this is going to be 28 this will go in the denominator is p1 so 4 twos are 4 sevens are so that is going to be p1 is 7 by 2 now what do we want here p2 so that is going to be x1 x2 and x3 so x1 by y1 is equal to x3 by y3 so x1 by y1 is 1 by 8 and x3 is p2 and x y3 is 64 this one so now again this also you are going to cross multiply so 1 into 64 is 64 8 into p2 so 64 divided by 8 is p2 so 8 ones are 8 eights are so p2 is 8 now we will see for this one p3 so that will be x1 x2 x3 x4 x4 by y y4 x1 by y1 is equal to x4 by y4 so x1 by y1 is 1 by 8 and x4 is p3 and y4 is 160 so again this you are going to cross multiply so this is going to be 160 is equal to 8 into p3 so 160 this will go in the denominator by 8 is p3 8 ones are 8 twos are 20 so p3 is 20 so now you will do with this one this and this one so x1 by y1 is equal to p5 by uh, sorry x5 by y5 this is the x y x5 by y5 so x1 by y1 is equal to x5 by y5 so 1 by 8 is going to be 13 by q this is 13 by q so this will be again this also you are going to cross multiply q is equal to 13 into 8 that is 104 so now this also you will do the same but you have to be careful with the decimal this part you are going to take this will be x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 x4 y4 and this is going to be x5 y5 so we have since they are very direct limits x1 by y1 is equal to x2 by y2 first we'll take this both so that will be 2.5 divided by 7.5 is equal to p1 by 3.3 so we can do two ways we can also see at both the places there is a decimal 2.5 divided by 1.5 so that decimal can be we can remove the decimal so 25 by we can write 75 25 ones are 25 threes are or i'll show the other way see here 2.5 means 25 by 10 7 by 5 means 75 by 10 this is the numerator this is the denominator so this is 25 by 10 and this will get flip over so that is going to be 10 by 75 there are many ways to do this one 25 ones are 25 threes are so that will be 1 by 3 either you do think of this one that after one decimal if you remove that both places decimal you can directly write the whole number or you can just do this one by removing the decimal or here what i did is instead of doing here i just cross multiplied 
So 2.5 into 3.3 .3 is going to be P, P1 into 7.5. 2.5 into 3.3 .3, and this is going to be 7.5 is P1. So now um, this, if we take this one, so 25 ones are 25 threes are, so that decimal is gone. But now here three is there, so three ones are, and this, because the 3.3 .3 divided by three, so that is 1.1, because there is a decimal over here. So the P1 is 1.1. So now in the second case, X1 by Y1 is equal to X3 by Y3. In this one, I have done directly, as I told you, that we can make it one by three. So Y3 is 5.68. You can just look at the table. Everything is in the table here. So same thing I have. So instead of scoring, you can just look at your table from the book. So 5.68 divided by Q1. So this will be five ones are, five threes are. So this Q1 will be, if you go this way, so that is going to be, Q1 is equal to 5.68 into three, which is 17.4. Then uh, X1 by Y1 is equal to X4 by Y4. So again, 2.5 divided by 7.5 is equal to 5.21 by Q2. So now here again, five ones are five, seven, seven, this one, 25 threes are. So here, if you cross multiply, Q2 is going to be 5.21 into three, which is 15.63. X1 by Y1 is equal to X5 divided by Y5. 2.5 divided by 7.5 is equal to P2. This X5 is P2 and this Y5 is 30.33. So here it will be three. When you cross multiply, so that will be 30.33 is equal to P2 into 3. So here, 30.33, this will go in the denominator, is equal to P2. So when you divide this one, 30.33, what do we get here? Divided by 3, 3 ones are 3. So here, 0. So here also you put 0. You will take this 3 down, 3 ones are 3. Again, this one, 3 ones are 3 decimal after 2 so you after 2 you are going to put decimal so 10.11 is equal to p2 if 5 pence cost rupees 70 how much will 12 pence cost now see here 5 pence is now you have to see whether it's a direct variation so now see here 5 pence cost is 70 so 12 pence means as the pence increases the cost also will increase right so if pence increase, cost also increases. Therefore, it, this is direct variation. So if this is direct variation, we will prepare the table. What is that? Pence and the cost. The number of pence that we can consider as X and cost of pence is equal to Y. So what is that? Five pence. So you will write in this one below the near five pence. So the cost is 70. So you will write a 70. So we want a 12 pence. 12 pence means here is pence. So you are going to write 12 over here. And we don't know the cost. So let, let us write this y2. Hmm? So this is x1, y1. And this is x2, y2. Hope this is clear. Why did I write here y2? Or you can add, write any variable over here as you wish. We can write c also. So we can also write here c that because c is the cost. So now here we have, because it is a direct relation, x1 by y1 is equal to x2 by y2. So this is x1 by y1. And this is x2 by y2 so now if you cross multiply this one so 5 into y2 is equal to 12 into 70 so y2 will be 12 into 70 and this is going to get divided so 5 ones are 5 14 are 12 into 14 that y2 is 168 so we can say cost of 12 pence is rupees 168 so by this one we have completed today's work do like and subscribe to my channel so you get the notification of the other parts. Thank you.